Hello everybody, this is Erinch from the World Fair Trade Organization. As you all know, we are the global community and verifier of social enterprises that fully practice fair trade. Today I'm speaking to one of our most exciting members, a real stalwart of the fair trade movement, the social enterprise movement, the organic movement, the cooperative movement, uh, the social solidarity movement, it's all there. And uh, we're talking with Matthew John from Last Forest, uh, who's going to be sharing their story. Uh, so we'll be connecting to India right now. I'm about to add, add them. Um, it says unable to join Matthew. I can see Last Forest has come in, but uh, hopefully you can check your uh, settings to allow you to join, or you might need to pop back off and back on again. But just to give a brief introduction to, to Last Forest, they are a World Fair Trade Organization member, uh, but there's so much more than that. They're a social enterprise where all of their profits go to supporting and enabling fair trade and enabling communities and producers to benefit from uh, their business. They have shops, they have production, they work with groups of producers. So uh, we'll be hopefully speaking very soon to them here we go. I technical barrier. We're connecting live to India right now. And one of a few things that we'll be talking to Matthew, John, and Lars Forrest about is um, especially around the current situation in terms of COVID nineteen. Um, India is significantly impacted. As we all know, uh, the, the impacts are very diverse around the world, but the, unfortunately, the situation isn't getting much better in India at the moment. Uh, that means that there's a significant shift that is happening in the fair trade community, in the social enterprise community. Um, one of the strategies we've seen last forest deploy is uh, to produce face masks and face coverings um, using the People's Mask Initiative, which is uh, an initiative that was started by WFTO Asia uh, to support members of the World Fair Trade Organization to create uh, products that are in higher demand and are necessary during this crisis. And uh, Last Forest has been one of the pioneers of that. Um, they also, they produce all sorts of forestry products. So uh, really trying to live a, a symbiotic relationship between uh, the social enterprise and the, uh, the the producers, the communities that they, they exist to serve. Uh, they, their story is highlighted in one of our uh, as one of our case studies uh, on the webpage wfto.com forward slash join the business revolution. So wfto.com forward slash join the business revolution. They're one of the case studies that we highlighted. And it tells the story of them and how Keystone Foundation played this key role in, um, in, in allowing them to, to start. So here we go. I've got the request from, uh, from last for us. And we might be having a few internet difficulties as we connect across the airways. But it looks like it's working now. I can see the screen has popped up. Um, Matthew has also got a long history in the organic movement as well as the fair trade movement. As I mentioned, last for us is uh is very much connected to all those movements as well but here we are we can see you matthew wonderful yeah. to see your happy smiling face under such difficult times i somehow thought it was half an hour later i just was checking out and then i see you already live oh apologies well great to have you on with us um really useful to to see the uh, uh the work that you guys have been doing uh with uh producers uh, with your communities over the last uh, few months as things have been really difficult. But Matthew, maybe in your words, you can t talk us through what that journey has been like, because we really need to, I think, zoom into the current situation. Yeah, I think um, if we start from an India perspective, initially in the first few months, you know, people thought that it was not going to impact us so much. But then it slowly started picking up. I think the the worst hit uh, came because, uh, you know, producers were not prepared. 
and if they were prepared for large you know orders or they were stocked up because many in many parts of the country the summer season is the is the tourism season and and people prepare for that even for us you know we do more than 40% of our sales just in two months and so when you prepare get products from suppliers and that takes you already two or three months you prepared for that and then suddenly it's just wiped out and so you're left with stocks now just lying unsold inventory which is dead and if it is food then you are stuck because you have to now get rid of that uh, stuff and that i mean i'm just talking about uh, local food like cheese uh, chocolates you know which we stocked up in our stores <clears throat> and suddenly you you know you were in a panic situation where you had to you had to do distress sales uh and you 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 lose out uh, on everything so that that was a huge blow for us because you were completely caught on the wrong foot um i think the i think we were saved just by the sheer commitment of the team that you know that we have to see this through i mean it was anyway something that was affecting all all people all over the world Mm. and so for so for the team suddenly let's find a solution i think our our board was also phenomenal that that way because in, in early march when we when this hit we had a small team meeting and then we took it out to the board and the board was like so proactive in in making decisions i think that saved us because they gave us different perspectives you know they were not people who were involved in everyday things and so when you they step out and they were already making calls that you know think of a situation if you have zero revenue for 6 months what are you going to do and so that sort of already got us on the path of you know you think it's not going to be true you know you hope it's not going to be true but when somebody tells you that can you start preparing for that uh i think it helped us to get that one step you know you, you got on online faster you were already sort of negotiating um you know extra working capital from the bank uh trying to get friends to see if they could chip in and lend money uh, into the organization and i think that sort of kept us going um so i think all these factors played a huge role the board played a role the team played a role um and i thirdly i think more very importantly the pivoting of from your normal business model to what opportunity comes up you know and i think there wfto asia i think jerome and mitos were were phenomenal because they the way they mm -hmm. moved on ppes and we were able to sort of see that masks were an opportunity you work with a local group um you know for them also it was something new i mean they 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 were sort of trained in tailoring but you suddenly starting to prepare masks this was completely out of the blue and so when that happened so the team to able to be able to pivot there and find a new business model grab an opportunity which sort of presented itself i think these were all part of uh, our learning experiences and sort of helped us tide through these uh tough months it's not that it's gotten easy but uh, yeah we survived well i mean uh, matthew i mean i couldn't agree more i think the the dynamism of the the community and and of key people like jerome and mitos were phenomenal during this period to to just really support people to to make that really quick pivot um yeah. and i think our what what came through and and your your enterprise last forest was one of our case studies in this business models report we launched at the yeah, beginning of yeah. the year um of which had a one really interesting finding which was that fair trade enterprises are four times more resilient than regular mainstream SMEs small and medium enterprises and that's not because they made more money during regular times it's not because they made higher profits that that wasn't necessarily the case at all it was because during times of crisis they don't they persevere they don't give up they they yeah. Yeah. You know, people get get behind the idea they get behind the enterprise partners maybe cut each other slack a bit more they cooperate they collaborate yeah. they share insight yeah. 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 and a whole ecosystem around the enterprise is a collaborative one you know none of it's peaches and happiness all the time obviously things are yeah. difficult yeah. sometimes too but compared to the mainstream cutthroat 
economy, it's a very different operating paradigm. And, and it feel, feels like maybe you, you had that experience during COVID. Yes. For, I mean, I, I'm just remembering, but I think, you see, we were a fully 100% domestic focused company, you know, 100% of our revenues uh, coming from within the country. And somehow a year back, we started shifting and thinking that, you know, should we, now that we're a little more organized, can we start looking at opportunities in other parts of the world? Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, and then we put up some some products at Ambiente um, on the WFTO um, uh, booth. And it sort of, the first sort of green shoots appeared through that. We had a we had a Dutch lady, just a single lady who who gave us an order, and then then we had El Puente, you know, who popped in, and it was amazing because these were organizations, individuals who suddenly again at this time gave us orders. I mean, I I, I was remembering even uh, Timothy from from Armenia, you know, El Puente stepped in and and took masks from them. They took soaps from us. I mean, they took uh, beeswax food wraps from us. This was phenomenal. And it was only because you realized that the the values that these organizations profess, they were living it, mm-hmm. you know? And, Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I mean, even yesterday, I, I mean, I think uh, there was, it was a WFTO post on something about El Puente. And I, that w- that's what I, I remarked is that these are true examples of institutions who, who are walking the talk. And I think that's very important. At this time, they stand out. They mm. stand out. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. And I, and I mean, that's where it's during crises that you, you get to know the true character and the true priority yeah. because yeah. it's a risk. Yeah. I mean, okay. El, El Puente is a really interesting business model too. It's partly owned and, and governed by the producers. They have a seat on the board of El Puente. Like it's a yeah. structurally an else, a different kind of model. A, a, another WFTO member, by the way, for those who, yeah. who don't know the El Puente model in, in Germany. But uh, if you are El Puente and you were saying, how, my priority is minimize my risk, maximize my returns. You wouldn't give orders like that during this time. Yeah. But if your Absolutely. priority is long-term commercial partnerships, supporting communities, solidarity with people who are most impacted, then you'd say, you know what, I will. We'll, we'll share this risk. I'll yeah, put yeah. this order through and I'll live with it. And I think that distinction feels um, very stark during a time. Yes. Like even, even the attitude, I think, was phenomenal because this was something uh, we, we sent off that parcel in the beginning of March and it got stuck within the country then. You know, it reached them end of June. We were in a panic here, but... You know, the people on that side, on the El Puente side, relax. We'll get it. You know, that attitude gives you confidence Mm. that, you know, here are people who appreciate what you are going through, who understand the the issues regarding logistics. And, um, you know, so you're feeling bad, but, you know, they don't add to that. I mean, they pep yeah. you up. And I, I think uh, that's phenomenal to, to have that sort of an um, uh, energy coming uh, from the yeah. other side. I think th- that positive energy that flows out from these institutions, I mean, these institutions are made out of people. Yeah. And, um, um, and these people make it, you know, so alive, uh, that, uh, that energy that, yeah, it, yeah. you know, sort of flows out through the organization. I mean, the, the, uh, the person in Netherlands um, um, uh, who just runs a store, she, wa- she became a household name among many of our team members because she was chatting with them on Instagram, you know, talking about movies and books. You know, at this time, it, it was just, you know, you take the pressure off everybody. Yeah. And I think... Those are things that uh, that are phenomenal and stand out. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna try something technically different here, uh, Matthew. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can show your website to people, um, okay. so that they get a sense of who you are. Hopefully, that's showing. So there's, yeah. uh, you know, this is the website, and uh, you'll get a sense of the kind of products that um, 
are currently promoted on the Lars Forest website. So you've got the face mask, which we discussed, but then you've got some of the forestry products like honey, um, the, the soaps that, uh, that Matthew discussed as well that, that are currently being sold via El Puente in Germany. Um, and you can see the great diversity here. And the reason I wanted to sort of show this was to give a sense to people watching that this is an incredibly diverse enterprise because you've got, you've got actual retail outlets. You're, you're producing food products. You're producing handicraft and, and fashion products. It's a real yeah. mixture, as people can see. Um, that, but, uh, I mean, how does that work? Because I went to business school. A lot of people went to business school, and, and normally you're taught to specialize. But you've diversified. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. Is, is that you are taught uh, to focus, you know, um, and take up one or two verticals and the moment you add on and, and some of those verticals don't do well, uh, the reaction you get is, you know, you have verticals which are cannibalizing the other verticals and sort of, you, you know, you, you tend to step back and say whether I'm doing things that are right, um, you know, or from a business uh, point of view, but then you realize that these are maybe and maybe they were not even on your business plan. Mm -hmm. You know, they came in just because something else happened. You moved in, or, or it was put in your lap, and and you you've took, taken that on, and you realize that it's actually and some of those things. It's the impact you are making which is more important. Mm -hmm. um, it is you know so so for the for the restaurant which sadly we had to give up just last week. We've had, we, I mean, there's been such a, such a wave of emotions that has gone through the entire office. I saw, I saw your social media post. I, it, it connected in my heart, Matthew, to see yeah, the pain yeah. of the decision yeah. of closing that restaurant. Yeah. So it, it will close on August 14th, which is five years to the day, five years to the day. But I mean, just to go back is, is that these five years, the number of people, the thousands of people who've gone through that restaurant. Um, the, the kind of food they've eaten, the kind of to understand the philosophy of slow food. Um, you know, uh, you know, every few months we would run a campaign which, which uh, the slow food movement calls the, um, the disco soup, which is basically waste vegetables from your local vendors, which are just put together in a pot and, and made into a soup. And those days, those soup was was given free of cost to any customer who, who walked in. And when you explain the concept of disco soup, that day you didn't need to clean the dishes. They would be wiped clean by all customers because, you know, it just hit them as to, you know, we have so much and we waste so much, yeah. you know. There's so many people who don't have this food. But it was something that you felt like, you know, this, this is how people should respect the food they get um, and they eat, you know. So it is local farmers. It is organic food. It is an effort. And that there is a fair price being paid to all these people at the back end. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so it, it, it has been tough at times, but maybe the COVID situation also has pushed us that we are realizing that, you know, uh, that by sticking to some of our core core strengths, we may see this through, you know. Um, so what, so, what, so what, are those, what are those core strengths, Matthew? For us, I think um, more, our products have been based on forest produce. Yeah. And for us to go back and to stick with them, because that's what Last Forest is known for. Um, um, wild produce, uh, um, which is sustainably harvested, which is uh, value added by women at the back end and is then taken into the market. I mean, that's our core of what who we are. It's mm -hmm. local produce, value added at local level. Um, it, is, it, um, it is for conservation. It is promotes, uh, promotes biodiversity. All of this is what we are. Mm. Uh, and that is what will take us through because when you stick with these core uh, core principles of what you want to do, I think uh, people also realize that. And and um, 
and i i see that appreciation coming from the market much more at this point of time yeah. right now it is honey which till the other day you know people used to ask us do you uh, do you know heat the honey do you uh, process it well and suddenly people are asking it is it raw honey is it unprocessed honey you know is the same set of people who who wanted a different value system just just a few months ago today they are asking you know whether it is raw jungle honey is it unprocessed and you know in its natural state and then they realize yeah this is the kind of product that we need to be uh, consuming to be able to to keep our immunity our health together so, uh, is, so we, is there I, is there an upper limit to i mean when i think about forestry products or forest products or or raw products that are organic from the, from nature clearly there's that the, the business has to have a a symbiotic relationship with nature there so you can't yeah. over consume you can't over produce you can and it's a very different paradigm businesses are yes. used yeah. to saying we'll sell and produce as much as possible and let's every year increase this but how does that work with 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 someone who's dependent on natural resources the way yeah. you are yeah yeah so so for us our flagship continues to remain honey um but you realize it's not only um is not only harvesting that is a, a, a that plays a crucial role and how sustainability is harvested what are the parameters you put in but i think extremely crucial here is the entire aspect of climate change where you mm-hmm. are actually not in control forget about ha- over harvesting these products because if you don't have the rain at the right time you don't have flowering at the right time you will, you will end up with zero uh, input you know yeah. there's no honey available and so yeah. how do you as a business how do you deal with that uncertainty because for us our our honey season is from you know some sometime in march up till up till june and in february march we are all still nervous whether we will get enough honey during this season mm. and that's where i think the 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 diversification has come to be able to look at the by product of honey which is beeswax and and create enough of an opportunity which you can scale up you know so you can look at beeswax products of balm soaps lip balms uh these can scale up to a much higher level than you can do with honey so honey remains a core a flagship but you have this this second line uh, of products which which uh, which keep you going which also can ensure that you have uh, continuous employment uh, at the village level because honey is something that is done by uh, by men in the villages and it mm. is the production of these value added items which is done by women in the villages so so and you realize that it is the women who need that income much more because they keep the family going they keep the kids going yeah. and that's that then becomes a much more of a fulcrum for the community uh, rather than uh, other other um, uh, items i see and um what about the other you know the other product lines you've got you've got some you know embroidery you you've got other sort of yes. textile I products think- gifts yes i think for us those became important because when we started last for us we we wanted it to be a market platform uh, not only for ourselves but for many other groups who don't have the strength in marketing who don't mm-hmm. have the strength in branding packaging and when you realize that if you've uh, built up a brand uh, that is recognized in the market you are able to leverage off that and so you know we can bring in products from other groups and when it goes into our own retail stores for the customers it's already they know that there has been a validation of this product there has been a process by which this product has appeared in this store and and then it makes it much more easier for them to to accept it so for us not only is it a market platform but it all also allows us to to present an entire portfolio of socially relevant uh products from around the country and for mm-hmm. customers to appreciate maybe they will not buy from our store but when they go out they know that they can look for products which make 
which have a value at the back end and i think that story line needs to be constantly reiterated reemphasized to the customers absolutely and um i mean you've got a shop as well you've got is it one shop how many shops does last forest have we have three three shops and and they stock all the different products that you're yes. essentially acting yeah. as a platform for yes 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 Yes. And, and how how have they fared, Matthew, during the the crisis? Oh, they've been the worst hit because yeah. we, we are in a tourism dependent economy, um, our place. So may, they we did not do uh, how if I put it in percentage terms, we didn't even do five five percent of what we sold last year in our stores. So it, wow. it was a disaster. It was a disaster. So it was some of these small export orders that pulled us through. It was um, we also supply to other um, retailers around the country, mainly in South India. They somehow in the bigger cities, I think uh, you know, life continued, and so people then started looking for these kinds of natural products. They sort of carried us. Through. So so if you look at the last three to four months means the supplies that we've done to to other retailers that has more or less matched what we did last year yeah mm -hmm. but it's is is the our own retail stores which is in a tourism space I mean, that got completely smashed up i'm really sorry to hear that because i know that was a real flagship i guess for you in terms of the yeah, channels yeah, right yeah. i mean that's that's yeah, where you're building yeah. your brand or yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's your cash flow every day you know having a retail store and that sort of gets wiped out but i think again the, the i think again hats off to the team because you know taking deferred salaries uh, taking some of them taking cuts in their salaries just to keep the the organization afloat i i think hats off to everybody that's that's really wonderful to hear and the other channel i think you use so, so you've got just to summarize to people, um, I, I jumped on a little bit early. I was so excited to talk to Matthew. So I started this uh, Instagram live about 30 minutes or 25 minutes early. Unfortunately, I just couldn't hold off. But for those joining now, which is the scheduled time to start, um, we've been talking to Matthew about the social enterprise, fair trade, organic, slow food business model that Last Forest has. And it's a real mixture of, of different channels. There was a restaurant, which unfortunately has just recently closed, there, there were three shops that are run by Last Forest in a, in a tourism-focused way. There are some local uh, Indian, South Indian chains, supermarket chains and buyers and commercial markets that they're supplying to, as well as international orders as well. Um, predominantly, I think, from fair trade buyers like El Puente, um, but also others. So that, that's sort of the mix, isn't it? That you've got, And then you've yeah. got e-commerce as well, because I can see on your yes. website, people can actually... Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show them all through this. So you can actually click through and uh, yeah. buy, uh, buy something now, add something to the cart, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, I think that allows people to kind of visit. But can you talk us through some of this, how the, how the e-commerce and the web shop has yeah. been during this time? I, I think e-commerce, that's the advantage uh, uh, with a young team. You know, um, I think they are all tech savvy. Mm -hmm. um, they're all clued on. Uh, I had to learn how to join uh, Instagram Live. Uh, I had a class taken by them in the evening. Um, but we we struggled in the initial years. But uh, we were uh, fortunate to have two interns from uh, from Sweden uh, a, more than a year ago. And then they they really went hard at at building up our uh, website, our platform, and that platform then has really paid off during this time because now you have a very smooth um, uh, process by which you can purchase things and it can, it is sent all over the country. It was also very useful because. At this time, there were many people who just bought gift vouchers so that many of these products could be could be distributed to people who could not afford them. So primarily it was for mass, but then people chipped in for, for you know, they just they just bought vouchers so that pe people could get uh, products out uh, to them. So that platform, then it became very important. 
hopefully we see this platform um growing and able to add on more partners on this so we've been talking i think even in india we've been talking now with a couple of other partners creative handicrafts sasha and to see how we can leverage of each other's websites you know if, if the other two also um have a strong web presence coming up then as fair trade producers you you become partners with each other and i think that's a that's a great story to take forward i mean that's that's phenomenal and i really wanted to kind of give people a sense of the diversity but also the um the savviness the commercial savviness uh john uh, matthew that your um your enterprise has i mean you're right your your young uh, social media conscious volunteers and and staff have done a fantastic job it's got a very fresh brand it's got a fresh look it's got a very relevant on trend and yeah. uh, and it, and you're riding a particular wave of interest in natural products that are eco friendly that are very conscious i guess you know uh, conscious consumers like, what does it yeah we, i just wanted to add also because uh, we now even during the pandemic we had started a process of uh, rebranding um, our entire uh, portfolio of products that sort of didn't go as as quick as we would have liked but is it it has continued and i think many of the things that we wanted to message out to to people i think will follow up over the next month or two our face first range of products has just come out uh, just this evening of lip balms uh, beeswax lip balms in a new packaging to be able to talk that these products are artisanal these are made by women uh, the faces of the women who who make that effort um, that it is from the forest all this messaging sometimes i feel we missed and we had to you know in a very high touch way you know constantly talk about it but now this packaging will carry all that information and so it makes it less intensive as a marketing team and and it can move into newer spaces where i think earlier the the product was more focused in sitting in in niche stores or stores that recognize this value system but now mm -hmm. i think with this new packaging it can move into more mainstream markets and tell that story to to those customers also and i think it's very important that many of our products reach those sets of people also because they need to they need to change you can't keep preaching to the converted yeah you know yeah. you you need to reach out to a new set of people absolutely talk us through that a little bit matthew as well what's your strat how how are you going to get there because i think this is a journey that the entire fair trade community wft community is engaging with right now that we have to do this this is no no longer a choice we cannot sit in our yeah. bubble we cannot just yeah. talk to the converted um we need to go beyond the current fair trade market but also with the current fair trade market so we need both but uh strategically wh what's your what's your approach how do you think through this yeah me <laughs> it was it took us many years to 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 make that call because you know you always feel that uh when you are in an insulated market you are in a high comfort zone um and then you realize that you can only go thus far and no mm -hmm. more um and and then when you then you realize that if you want to make an impact you need to to step out of that comfort zone to be able to face questions to be able to to uh to deal with with an outside world which is sometimes very hard and ruthless in the in the way the the system works but um, and the kind of flack sometimes the team receives i'm surprised how they are still every day they can walk in with a smile you know because sometimes the feedback you get from customers can be tough the logistics has not been easy on you and you get the the flack for that but and we realize that if you don't make this change you will very soon become irrelevant you'll become a very small niche market yeah. if you want to make an impact you have to step out yeah and that has taken us time and again i i feel it's important that in last forest because it was incubated by a development institution which is keystone foundation mm -hmm. the first set of people who came and moved moved out of keystone to to be part of the uh, new entity last forest many of them came with a softer 
development approach the newer people who who join last forest directly they come because they believe in what you are doing and to do it well you know so they come from a different mindset so i think it's important to have people with both mindsets because there's one yeah. there's one set who are the conscience and there's the other set who are driven by numbers yeah, yeah. and to be able to keep this both sets of people together and but move towards the same goal move towards yeah. the same goal because you you know what you have to get what the impact you have to make keeping these two sets of people together i think today we are in a position where i think even with the new branding and packaging we will be able to address that there was a lot of hesitation because you you think you know should i become a a a supermarket product you know that that's a dilemma you know what's But, what's the answer to that should you you don't need to become a supermarket product but in a supermarket you can stand out yeah by that messaging by your packaging by your messaging and by your by the information you put out so it is you you i think you, you need to address that because otherwise we we are shirking our responsibility by sitting in a smaller uh, comfort zone if if we have to and to to that extent to be able to deal with you know products are not accepted products are returned there may be bad debts that you have to deal with i mean all of this is reality yeah and so, sometimes if you work in your bubble all of this is forgiven you know because you may have a fair trade buyer who who accepts you is willing to accept a fault that's part of it but there's there's the other part of life also which is not so forgiving it can be harsh yeah and and when you we moved into this e-commerce space may is very easy for people to say you know e-commerce is is the next thing and all of us have to be there i mean the last year year and a half i realized the team when they're working behind is you have to go through a lot your photographs uh, you know have to be up there the moment a product uh, a price changes you have to make that change um, a product goes out of stock you have to make that change it's not easy and you have to ensure that it leaves in two days because because with the amazons of this world people are are used to getting the product next day you know and sometimes yeah. it's not possible to get it in the next day how do you talk to the customers how do you how do you ensure that they stay with you through this journey you may not be as efficient as amazon but you are getting there I mean, you so you're getting the pro product proximity wise though, how close is your warehouse to the consumers that are going on to your e-commerce site no it all goes from our from the small town and so so, so the it's logistics impossible. you can't you can't get something the next day in the other end of india no 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 it's not possible so you, you have to give longer lead times i think and maybe this pandemic was good in one sense because people have learned that you can't get it the next day so people are willing to buy and wait because mm -hmm. they know that the product that they get is worth their wait so do you that, expect do, do, do you expect you will be um appealing or setting up web shops for for consumers in other markets in other countries in the future Wow, for for people in other countries, maybe that's we've not thought <laughs> we've not thought well, that. But you have a billion I, people, so maybe maybe you don't need to if you get. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there are people already from the U.S., from Turkey. They are already writing in asking for products. So you have to you have to do an offline arrangement with them. But there's already there's already interest popping up. So yeah. so. we don't know maybe in the next couple of months itself it will, it will start but then we have to we have to we are realizing also that we have to create a team that will be able to take this e-commerce up in a much more specialized way the 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 effort that we will have to make will be much more mm. so for those who have just joined um to to give a bit of a recap i mean i've, I've been talking to Matthew John who leads the last forest uh one of the most innovative and interesting members of the world fair trade organization bringing together organic slow food as well as fair trade they're a social enterprise they're working in forestry communities it, it's the story is incredibly rich and and uh and diverse but but very substantive at every part of that 
and a very broad ranging business model as well, producing all kinds of products, obviously with, with honey and uh, beeswax products now at a, at a central core focus, I guess, or, or, or the center of the business model, but a really broad range trying to become a platform for, um, for, for those producer groups in that community to reach the market more broadly. E-commerce has been a big part of it, a, a complex part of it, but also the supply chains are mainstream. Uh, retailers as well as fair trade buyers uh, and, and their own three shops and retailers as well. So really interesting, diverse, rich business model that I think is uh, probably brought out a lot of lessons, uh, Matthew, for you and, and those yes. around you that, are, that have worked with you. So, you know, is there any specific lesson um, that you'd like to highlight? Is there, is there anything specific that actually the most interesting thing is always what did you get wrong? Because everyone talks about what they did right. And we never learn from the fa failures or mistakes. But is there anything that jumps out at you that says, you know what, this is, I didn't expect this. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, people talk of expansion. And, you know, we ventured out not once, twice, um, into retail spaces, opening retail stores in other parts of the country. Yeah. And uh, you realize that it's not easy at all. And if you don't have people, I think that was that was the biggest mistake we made is is that we didn't have people who were ready to take that on as, uh, you know, um, ownership was missing. And when you have somebody who's just an employee uh, without an ownership of the store or the values that uh, you're talking about, it will fail. So they, those were big losses for us, big lessons uh, for us as we had to, uh, you know, cut losses and move out. Uh, so, so those are instances I will never forget. We had to do one last year. Uh, we did one a few. I mean, we ventured out after a lot of thought, but even that that we had to uh, we had to switch out of. I think the one of the other things that we've learned is, and that has been over the past year, is to is yes you can expand but i you you retain your core uh, focus on products because the moment you you slip out uh, is not on, it, you may you may take them on because of good intentions but i think what what you do is as a business you hurt yourself you know your cash flows get locked up you you don't know how to deal with the product because you don't understand the product uh, well enough so if you mm. add a product, you need to understand it through and through. So, so now I realize that, you know, if I add a product into my basket, number one, it needs to fit into already a set basket of products so that it's an addition to that basket and not something that, you know, is an outlier and suddenly something new for a, for a customer, but also to understand that product through and through. So if, if, you, if I don't understand garments, I should not get into it all the way, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I mean, there's similar examples are there for other products also. So we realize that yes, I can expand, but expand in a, in a more thoughtful manner rather than so your good heart may be there, but you have to mix it with the you know with the business sense and and take us uh, take a take a call which which uh, which meets both both uh, both requirements. And if we were to dream a little bit, Matthew, if you're looking long term, you know, five years down the track, eight years down the track, can you paint me a picture of what does Last Forest look like? What, what, what's its size? What's its focus? Where's it operating? What's, what's, what's your dream? <laughs> I think Last Forest, um, as an institution, the, the growth should be such that Number one, as a platform, it is able to support a much larger set of communities. Um, uh, we, we are touching and scratching the surface right now. That's one. Second is locally, it should be able to support projects which work with indigenous communities to, to help set up more production centers or to be able to take up more diverse activities as to supporting cultural issues, we, because these are things which impact indigenous communities. And we tend to always scramble to, to be able to either run a newspaper, to run a radio. 
if last forest is able to support these kinds of activities i think it would have it would have achieved its purpose not only self sufficient by itself but is able to support communities outside and i, I remember a, a comment by you pretty early on when i started we we, we met i think nearly 2 years ago now in uh, in nepal uh, yes. i remember we were you it might not have been meaningful to you but i really remember this i think it was over one of the coffees where we were talking about size of the enterprise i think we were just generally having a chat about it and you said something along the lines of you know it not that it's not always a magic bullet to just make things bigger that maybe we need to make more of something rather than make the same thing bigger we need to proliferate and 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 that's kind of how nature works when you look at a forest it that you don't end up with one massive tree you end up with yeah. lots of thriving trees that are eco you know codependent and yeah. Yeah. foster an ecology I mean w- yeah. what's your thoughts on that I think it's it, it still remains very relevant even today because when we work so so as keystone keystone works with many other uh, groups across the country and for us it is important that as last for us we are able to add that enterprise value to those organizations because many of them are very small uh, they are three people five people working in that organization uh they they have communities who are facing livelihood issues if last forest is not able to step in in those spaces then its impact is very limited i think it it needs to be able to, um its its um its reach should be into those places where the impact is most is maybe not 100% business sense 75% business sense but can we take that risk and i think yeah. as as fair trade enterprises to to calibrate the kind of risks that we take which which may not meet all business principles but i think that's what will make us difference uh, make us different and keep us different that we okay. are able meet a need uh that is that needs to be met at that point of time yeah and uh yeah nothing sort of exemplifies it better than last forest you we we're so proud to have you as a member as a, as a pioneer and as as an organization that's not only completely locked into its mission but also is is really pioneering and innovating in different directions commercially um in various markets so Matthew thank you so much for giving us your time for being thank uh, so Erinch it's been great to talking to you and we are very proud to be part of that fair trade community Well thank you and uh, we stretched this out to 50 minutes so those that joined at the time we advertised still got uh you know 20 minutes of of Matthew talking about last forest and a bit of a summary from us but thank you everybody for joining and for supporting this this is going to go up as an Instagram uh TV link as well so we'll have quite a few people okay. watch this or listen to this but thank you for all your support and solidarity thank and good you. luck as as you navigate some very tough times in India uh with last forest Yeah 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 take care take care and thanks everybody yeah thank you my again. friend thank hello to the whole team as well and uh big hugs to you and the entire dynamic team there at last forest super all the best to you too bye 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 bye